we're going to talk about balance sheet accounts in kind of interesting and quirky settings. Hopefully things that help you remember what type of things end up on a balance sheet. So we had the accounting equations, assets equals liabilities, owner's equity, the, you know, and that's the equation that we're always going to talk about in the class. Assets are all the resources. Liabilities are all the obligations. Owner's equity is the net difference. You can think about it like your home. You have your home and everything in it that you own and have control over. The mortgage is the debt owned at the house. All right. And what does, what is owner's equity? What is your owner's equity in your house? It's your home's value net the mortgage. This equation is set up so that there's economic resources equals the claims to those economic resources. So the question frequently comes up, what do I call it? How do I label the account? Uh, and how do I come up for the name for the account? And, you know, determine if it's an asset, liability, expense, gain or loss, and then put that label somewhere alongside to the description. All right. So if you're talking about equipment and you know, it's an asset, uh, you can call it the equipment asset, right? Uh, if you make money from selling snow cones, you could have snow cone revenue. Um, you know that snow cones can't be an asset. Why? Because I mean, snow cones melt, right? They don't, they don't keep, they melt, they get everywhere. Right? So especially if you've had kids, right? So snow cones, selling snow cones would be a, a revenue item, right? So if you're talking about something, put, put one of these names on there and then describe the account and you'll, you'll be there. You'll be in a good spot. What you don't want to do is not put enough description in it. So I don't know what you're talking about. So let's look at some examples. Uh, this is actually my grandfather right here. And this was taken, I think over 70 years ago. He's, he's since passed away. My grandfather started a pool company when he was a high school teacher. And this is him building his first swimming pool at the back of his house. The, it's, you know, behind him, he has a couple students there working with him that would come on the weekends and, and help him build the swimming pool. A lot of people have told me that, like, you know, my grandpa is just extremely attractive, just a very, very good looking guy, like unbelievably good look. And uh, I, I agree with that. I agree. He is really, really, really attractive, a good looking guy. OK, this is a this is an interesting question for you to make you think about assets so that you kind of get your mind straight about what we're talking about. Your company, your swimming pool company, and you dig a hole for a customer. Is that hole an asset? The hole, it's the hole in the ground, not the dirt that you took out, the hole, the vacuum of space that is in there. Is that an asset? You used to have dirt in there. It's gone. You think it's an asset? It's the, it's the lack of something in the ground right there. Is that an asset? Is that a, a resource? The answer is yes, that is an asset. And it's weird to think about because you're like, wait, it's an asset. There's nothing there. It's a hole. But guess what happens? So let's say you dig a hole for a customer and that customer decides, I'm going to stiff you. I don't want to pay you for that hole. Well, what can you do? This is America, guys. What can you do? You sue them. That's what you do. I'm not saying that my dad, my grandpa sues people, but, but I'm saying that if somebody owes you something, as Americans, what do we do? We take them to court and we get our money and this is owed. And so if they signed a contract saying they're going to pay and they decide to stiff you and you have this hole in the ground that you've worked on, you can go to them and say, no, I have a claim to their resources because they, they committed to paying me. So as a result, that hole in the ground, that is an asset. Crazy, right? So the vacuum of space that's in the ground could be an asset, right? That's, uh, that's, that's what you need. There's a probable future economic benefit that's going to be there. And so that's, a, that's, that's an asset. Okay. What about installing rebar? Rebar is the steel that's used to keep the structure of the pool in place. And that rebar, if you can see all the lines in the ground, that rebar keeps the concrete from uh, cracking and moving in, in, in bad ways. And so that rebar is there for structural reasons. And if you install that rebar, do you have an asset? Well, if you have a hole in the ground as an asset, well, surely putting steel in the ground is going to be an asset. So that rebar, yeah, it's an asset. And if somebody tries to stiff you by not, you know, paying for you doing work, installing rebar, you can take them to court and you can get paid for it because they've committed to a contract for this stuff. So the big thing that you're always trying to figure out is what are these accounts? What are the names of the accounts and how do they work? So key questions you want to figure out are determining what account it is. All right. Asset liability, owner's equity. You know, revenue gain loss and determine what state it, was it statement it goes on. Does it go on the balance sheet or income statement? And the big secret to accounting is to say things slow. If you say things slow, you can figure a lot of stuff out. So if, I, I always say, if you say it slow, you're going to know. All right. So a big problem in accounting with students is they 
they think too quick or they think that they need to have the answer like that. You don't need to have the answer like that. If you're thoughtful about it and you think about it and you just read things kind of slowly, you can kind of figure things out. So let's go through some examples where, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over some examples just to see if you can get these categories of these different sub accounts, right? Um, what we're doing is we're doing the balance sheet. So you have asset liability and owner's equity. Okay. So asset liabilities and owner's equity are your options. And um, I need a volunteer. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, the Rock. Oh, you want to go one-to-one -one with the great one? Uh, Mr. The Rock. Um, if we had inventory, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Look, I just got to get through this, okay? We, You're wasting a lot of people's time here. Uh, can we just get through and, and do this? Inventory. If you had an inventory account, would it be an asset liability of our owner's equity? This would be an asset, or as I call it, candy asset. No, candy's not involved, all right? Uh, asset's fine. Asset is what it is. The rock will lay th the smack down all over your candy assets. Okay, great. That's very good. All right, so let's go through some other accounts then. Prepaid expense. Now, uh, The Rock, I want you to take this one slow. It's names matter. What we call accounts matter. Names matter. It doesn't matter what the name is. No, it does matter what the name is. It matters a lot. So uh, read this one slow and try to figure it out. Know your role and shut your mouth. Okay, fine. Okay. So which is it? Prepaid expense. Asset liability owner's equity. It's an expense. No, it's not. It's not an expense. It says it in the name. I know, but it is a prepaid expense. The prepaid modifies the expense. I think it's a liability because it has the word expense in there. And liability, it sounds like an expense. Uh, well, The Rock, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. It's an asset. The reason why it's an asset is it's an expense that you've prepaid. So if you, let's say this expense was rent and you paid for the year in advance, and let's say your landlord decided to kick you out, what would you do? I'd lay the biggest smack down on him he's ever seen. Sweet cream, ice cream sandwich, he would be hurting. Yeah whatever that means. You could also do something legally. What would you do? Oh, you take them to court. In America, we can sue people if they don't deliver on a contractual obligation. Somebody decides not to pay you to deliver on a prepaid expense, you could get some of that cash back for sure. And they're committing to deliver it to you. So this is a resource you haven't used up. You've just transformed cash into another asset. Okay, accounts payable, a payable. These are accounts that you must pay. Liability, all right, yeah, that's right. It's a liability. Why do you think liability? It's something you have to pay in the future, so you're gonna owe money on. That's exactly right, that's exactly right. You're gonna, owe, you gotta pay it in the future, so that's what, that's what you have to do. Excellent job. All right, so let's do this next one. This next one, I need you to say this one slow and pay attention to the name of the account. It doesn't matter the name of the account. Yes, it does. It does matter the name of the account. Please stop saying that. The words matter a lot in accounting. They matter a ton. All right, so we have unearned revenue. Unearned revenue. This is revenue that is not earned. Is it an asset liability owner's equity? It's a revenue. It says revenue in the words, but it's not a revenue. It's a different account. It's not a revenue account. It says it in the name. It's not revenue. It's an unearned revenue, so it means something. Revenue is good, so I'm going to call it an asset. All right, uh, no, it's not an asset. It's a liability, and this is why. If someone pays you in advance with that cash. That cash represents a future service that you're gonna have. So let's say that you're the landlord and somebody else pays you for the year in advance, all right? They've given you all this cash. You have to deliver on a good or service over time. That's a liability. You have to deliver it. Whether you have to deliver a, a piece of equipment, your time and energy through a service or something else, all of that is a liability. Whether it's cash or that, that's a liability. You have to have some sort of outflow in the future. And so that's what makes it un unearned revenue. That's what it is. Do you know what the problem is, Professor Welch? What's that? That you are absolutely horrible. Thanks, I appreciate that. Can we just go on with the class? You're really taking up a lot of people's time. Unearned revenue is not a revenue account. It's a liability because you still have the obligation to earn the revenue. Uh, revenues are not on the balance sheet, they're on the income statement. So the name of the account matters. Try this one. Oh man, the people's champion is very familiar with cash. That's right. So what is cash? Which account is cash? Ooh, cash is an asset, right? And I appreciate you not referring to it as a candy asset. It's just an asset. Let the rock remind you of something. You ain't no superhero. What? Uh, okay, I guess. These are what the subcategories of the accounts are. So once you kind of see these things and get more familiar with their, their nature is you can put them in these different categories and it's going to help you with journal entries in the future. I'm not no Mickey Mouse student. So um, I use as a setting for this class, uh, Breaking Bad, and it's not an endorsement of Meth Labs. It's not an endorsement of 
uh, uh, people being on drugs or anything associated with addiction. Uh, it is used mainly because it is such a horrible, horrible, horrible industry and business, okay? And uh, I use the examples because I think it makes you remember things. It's from popular culture, and I think it'll help you remember things. So bear with me on these examples, uh, the Breaking Bad examples. Uh, we talk about Walter White and uh, Jesse Pinkman. Uh, Walter White is a, a high school teacher that decides he's going to open up a meth lab. And it's a fictional story. Uh, and it doesn't discount the real problem that this this is, but what it does is it kind of shows you and makes in a memorable way how you can remember a lot of the accounts and a lot of the different things. Because when you think of it in such a weird setting, you're like, wait a second, what? And so we use Breaking Bad a fair amount in this account, in this class, and hence the name of the channel, Breaking Bad Accounting. Okay, so um, Golden Moth Methylamine. The methylamine is used in the process of creating this. Uh, of the manufacturing process of, of the meth. The methylamine is this liquid that you got to get. And so the methylamine, what type of asset would that be? Well, in this business, that asset would be uh, a raw good. You might think it's an inventory item, which you could, you could probably categorize it as an inventory item, but that as an inventory is not really what you're selling. You smell, sell the, the finished good meth. So you'd call this part of your raw materials uh, and you'd call it, you know, golden moth, you know, uh, raw materials or something like that. You could call it inventory, probably give you credit for calling it inventory, but it's not a finished good. So you really want to call it uh, raw materials. All right. What type of asset is the, is this, I, I, you know, this, I've taught this class a number of times and um, there's been one person that had the most wrong answer ever. Uh, I said, okay, what, what type of asset is this? Uh, and uh, is, they said land. Um, and that's the wrong answer. It's not, a, it's not land. This RV is equipment. So you'll see the, the cloud in the top. Uh, this is where they manufacture their meth. They do it in an RV, right? So the RV is the equipment. That's what they use. They drive out in the middle of nowhere. They pump all these noxious fumes that, you know, are, you know, poisonous uh, into the air. And this is their factory. And so the RV is the factory where they create uh, this, this meth. All right. So let's talk about Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman, it's all good, man. Uh, is a lawyer, and it's a lawyer that bails a lot of people out for a lot of different things. Uh, and he has the slogan, better called Saul. I can make it legal. And he just is like this crazy lawyer, right? So you prepay Saul Goodman for legal expertise. So you prepay him. So that might feel like it's supposed to be an expense, but it's not an expense yet. You prepay. That's a resource. That's an asset. So you prepay, that's an asset. So that's an example of, of an account that you, you, you keep track of on your balance sheet. So assets, liabilities, owner's equity here, these are the examples uh, from, these are examples of some of these accounts. And so this is an example from Tesla balance sheet. This is from their 2013 financial statement. You'll notice there's a couple of things in its reporting. This one's reported in thousands. So any number here, you add, you know, three, three zeros to the end of it, and that's the actual value. So this is an 800,000, this is 845 million in cash and cash equivalents for December 31st, 2013. Uh, and so, uh, you look and you say, okay, well, what's it in? It's in thousands. And then it's listed in these different ways. So there's multiple years. This is as of December 31st, 2013. And then what was it the year, prior year? And then they order it based on liquidity, right? So current assets, cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, accounts receivable, inventory. You know, if you say it's slow, you can kind of figure it out. What's restricted cash? It's cash that's restricted in some way. Why would, might it be restricted? You might have a debt obligation or something like that. So you can kind of figure these things out as you say them. Uh, property, plant, equipment, uh, net. What's that net of? That's going to be net of depreciation. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So all of these come down, total assets down here. Now that total asset amount, usually this is on the same page, a piece of paper as liabilities and owner's equity. I've kind of split it up so that it's easier to read on this slide. So liabilities and owner's equity, which would have also been on the same page as on this second slide. And the second slide shows uh, different accounts. You'll, so, you'll see this account deferred revenue as a liability. What do you think deferred revenue is? Yeah, it's something similar to unearned revenue. So the accounts don't always follow these exact names, but they're very similar and they're very close. And so they, they, they account for things. You'll see things on this uh, like customer deposits. What's that? Well, this is the crazy thing where, you know, people put a deposit on a car that isn't developed for another five years and uh, they're able to create cash flow uh, by doing this. So these statements are kind of interesting uh, in that way. Uh, if you go down here, so here's uh, current liabilities here. So these are all the things that need to be paid off in like a year or expected to be paid off in a year. And then 
Uh, long-term liabilities are down here and they have bonds and other things, long-term debt. And then you get here down, down to stockholders equity. You'll see this here. They have preferred stock and they have common stock and they have it at a tenth of a cent. And then they have this additional paid in capital. What is that? That's the net amount that people paid them to buy the shares. Interesting thing, the accumulated deficit here, what does that mean? Accumulated deficit is like retained earnings, except for if you haven't made money. And Tesla's had a long time where they haven't made positive, you know, net income. And so actually, so at this time, and so they had a negative and very typical for new companies. So these are the examples of uh, items on a balance sheet and how these accounts show up.